What's going on, nation? Today I'm going to talk about a very important subject for whether you're a beginner or an advanced athlete. But before I do, I want to remind you guys that I'm launching the follow-up to my Lean Muscle System program. Now the first four-week program was focused on lean gains, which is building muscle with minimal fat. And the new six-week program, also it's going to focus on muscle growth, but places much more emphasis on building strength. So if you're looking for more power, this is going to be the program for you. And I'll toss a link to that down in the info section below. Now, mind-muscle connection. Command your muscles to grow. Is this something that we like to say for fun out loud, or is there some hidden truth to this statement? Now it's no secret that beginners have a hard time feeling specific muscles when they exercise, and the most common question I get is, how do I feel a bench press in my chest when I only feel it in my arms? Now the reason why many people have a hard time feeling specific muscles being engaged has to do with their mind-muscle connection, and we're going to call it the MMC. And I have a news flash for you guys. It's not only beginners that have a hard time with this. The mind-muscle connection occurs at the neuromuscular junction, and what happens is your brain releases a chemical neurotransmitter called acetylcholine to communicate with the muscles in the body. Once released at the neuromuscular junction, it crosses the synapsis, which is the tiny space that separates the nerve from the muscle where it binds to receptors on the surface of muscle fibers. This is what causes the muscle contraction. I know it's a mouthful, but this is important, guys. Now, if you think about how a single muscle head is made up of many individual muscle fibers, you are actually increasing the number of muscle fibers being recruited when you perform a lift by improving your mind-muscle connection. This will result in more quality muscle contractions, which means more strength and growth resulting from your workouts. While the majority of us believe in the mind-muscle connection, there are still those who believe that if you just focus on proper form when performing an exercise, the right muscles will do their job automatically. Now this couldn't be farther from the truth, nation, and I'm going to explain why. Let's take a look at some of the big compound lifts, such as a squat, deadlift, or bench press. There's much more going on here than I pick things up and put them down. On deadlifts and squats, for example, you need to push through your hips with a massive force to complete the exercise. But you won't lift nearly as much weight unless you learn how to contract your glutes during this portion of the movement. The same can be said for the bench press. You're not just lying on a bench and lifting a bar. You need to plant your feet, flex your glutes, retract your shoulder blades, and then learn how to drive through your feet to press the bar, especially when lifting super heavy weight. Now all three exercises also heavily depend on activating your internal belt as well, which is a whole other story, and I'll post a link to that video over here somewhere. But don't feel overwhelmed guys, targeting muscles gets easier with practice. A great way to get started would be to spend some time flexing your muscles in the mirror to learn how to activate them independently of each other. You must understand that until you can improve your mind-muscle connection, you are at a significant disadvantage when compared to an advanced lifter as we can manipulate various exercises to target specific muscles without having to significantly alter form. One of the easiest ways to improve your mind-muscle connection is to work with light weight, a slow tempo, and a lighter grip of performing various movements. For example, try performing a skull crusher or a barbell bicep curl with a a super loose grip in a 2-2-2 tempo. And an example of this would be, let's see, a bicep curl 2-2-2 two, two, two tempo would be 1-2 on the way up, hold for 2 at the top, 1-2 on the way down. And instead of squeezing the bar as hard as we can, we're just barely holding on to it with enough strength so that it doesn't fall out of our hands. And you'll notice that this almost instantly takes away the majority of the forearm engagement that would naturally occur during these movements and allow you to really focus and isolate your triceps or biceps. Now the same can be said for the barbell bench press. Aside from form issues, a lot of people have a hard time feeling their chest activate because their arms fatigue first. By reducing the weight and slowing down the reps, your body will now finally have time to focus and by having a light 
tight grip, you will not be distracted by muscle contractions in your arms. So what is the main point being taken away from here? It's that focus is key and focus is something that cannot be rushed. As you become a more advanced lifter, you will soon realize that once you learn how to focus on contracting individual muscles, that the next step is learning how to contract them in proper amounts and in proper combinations during specific movements for optimal performance. And these ratios will change whether your goal is to develop maximum strength, endurance, or activation. But don't overwhelm yourself just yet, guys. One step at a time. Have you ever gone to the gym and seen your fellow lifters just kind of going through the motions? For example, using momentum to swing a 135 pound barbell bicep curl for reps, or just bouncing the barbell off their chest on the bench press or off the floor for deadlifts? Or maybe you even catch those few people who utilize the rubber stoppers at the bottom of the weight stacks as a bouncing pad so they can lift the whole weight stack. That one actually just drives me insane because I look at these people and I'm like, do you, how do you not realize that you're not doing anything? But that's a whole other story. So if this is you or someone you know, you are not only running the risk of a serious injury, but your mind-muscle connection is decreasing daily. Too many people get obsessed with how much weight they're lifting rather than how much work their muscles are actually doing. Your muscles don't grow because of the weight moving up and down. They grow because they're forced to contract when isolated. To break this down even more, just because you're moving more weight doesn't mean that your target muscles are doing more work. So, if you're doing dumbbell bicep curls and on each each and every repetition, you have to swing and contort your whole body just to do a dumbbell curl. And then once you get to the top, instead of controlling the weight on the way down, you're letting it just drop and your body swings forward. Not only are your target muscles getting the short end of the stick, but this obviously increases your risk of injury. Now, if you consistently train like this, your brain will never learn how to properly communicate with your muscles and your mind-muscle connection can actually begin to get worse, which will lead to zero gains. Therefore, you should always focus your mental energy on contracting your target muscles rather than moving heavy weight. If the above didn't drive home the importance of the mind-muscle connection, let me leave you with one last thought. In order to understand why the mind-muscle connection is so important, you have to understand the difference between primary and secondary movers. The primary mover is the muscle that is intended to do the most work during an exercise, and the secondary movers are the muscles that support the primary mover. For example, when performing a pull-up, your lats would be the primary mover, the targeted muscle, and your biceps would be the secondary mover. And your goal should be feeling each and every rep in the targeted muscle, which is your lats. So, if you feel like you have to prove something and you don't check your ego at the door, you might be able to crank out 30 pull-ups in a row, but how much work did you actually do in terms of targeting and growing your lats? Now, let's get down to what matters, guys, and talk about some tips on how to improve your mind-muscle connection. Number one, practice flexing in the mirror. This will help you visualize your contractions. You can also try flexing your targeted muscles in between sets during your workout. This will force more blood into the area, giving you the pump feeling, which will in turn make it easier to focus on that muscle group during the exercise. Two, change the focus of your workouts. Once you have acquired the pump during your regular workout, change your focus to isolating the targeted muscle group group. For example, if you have a hard time targeting your chest, once you've completed two to three exercises and your chest is beginning to feel pumped, immediately lower the weight and slow down the tempo of your reps so you can work on your mind-muscle connection during your chest movements. Three, warm-up sets. When training heavy, try performing a few warm-up sets with lighter weight working your way up to your working sets. For example, 
If your goal is to train in the three to six rep range, try a few sets of 12 reps, 10 reps, or even eight reps to help your body focus on contracting the muscles in the area you're working for better performance on the heavier reps. Four, switch from heavy sets to light sets. For example, if you're performing heavy deadlifts, focus on proper form. Once you complete all your sets, significantly lower the weight, still maintain proper form, but change the focus to concentrating and activating the target muscles needed to perform the movement. Five, perform slower reps. You will need to use lighter weight, and the goal here is to have a three to four second concentric and eccentric part of the repetition in a one second pause at the point of maximum contraction. So for example, if you were doing a bench press, you would unrack the weight, and you would go four seconds on the way down. As soon as you go all the way down, four seconds on the way up, pause for one second at the top, and then complete the next repetition. This slow tempo will give you ample time to completely focus on the targeted muscles for maximum engagement and improved mind-muscle connection. Number six, everybody's favorite thing to say, check your ego at the door. Remember nation, it's quality over quantity when it comes to increasing muscle and strength. The most common reason why people have poor mind-muscle connection is because they become obsessed with how much they can lift opposed to creating stronger muscle contractions. The last tip, get in the zone. The gym is not a social club and you guys need to be able to block out external distractions. We all have the same things going through our mind, but you have to understand, as soon as you get to the gym, you've made a decision that you're gonna be there for a set amount of time. So any problems you have at work, any problems you have at home, or anything going on in your life, is gonna get kicked to the wayside because you're gonna be in that gym for an hour whether you think about those problems or not. So if you can just mentally focus on your workout, you can take care of those problems when you're done. And this is something that I actually deal with when I go to the gym because time is a huge factor. We all have a lot of things to do. So instead of me getting stressed out about having to mow the lawn and do this and do that and go home and edit videos and do all these things, I say to myself, my purpose of coming to the gym right now is to focus on myself, de-stress, and make gains. And if I can't properly focus on my body because I'm thinking about all these things that I can't take care of while I'm at the gym, it's gonna ruin my workout and possibly make my mind-muscle connections a lot worse, and that's something we definitely don't wanna deal with. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more great content, and once again, if you want to jump on the lean muscle system, I get a link for that down in the info section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys. You guys remember how weak Captain Ginyu was after he took over Goku's body? Poor mind-muscle connection. <laughs>